going back to a moment ago <laughs> to uh, my previous transition, because uh, you were starting to kind of get into how the a part of how you make all the capabilities that you just described so powerful is by taking advantage of the full power of underlying tools that people have in their data warehouses. So they could be Snowflake, it could be Google BigQuery. Um, what are other interesting parts of your tech stack as you build your platform or the way that analytics work in your platform? You know, obviously again, not getting into like your secret sauce, but if there's some, you know, some interesting aspects of the way that you've developed your platform um, that you could tell the audience, it'd be awesome to hear about it. Yeah, I think the, the general approach is that you're going to have some input into the process, right? You're defining how metrics are defined, and you're giving that as an input into, into Glean. And you're sort of saying which dimensions are important and how they're related to each other in a pretty lightweight way. And then behind the scenes, we're also going to do some data profiling. And so we try, we're not going to extract any data. We're going to rely mostly on live computation from your, your data warehouse, but we are going to do some profiling and some caching and acceleration. And we do that just to make the, the experience feel incredibly performant and very fast, even if there's like a little bit of latency from your data warehouse. And so we're just, you know, it's a web tech stack. So it's React and D3 for the front end. And then we use, uh, Apache Arrow for data serialization, and we're shipping data to the browser and doing some computation in the browser if it is faster. And then we have a uh, a Redis cache that sort of like uh, holds that data, stores that data, caches that data, and then distributes it to the clients when needed, but still really trying to lean on the data warehouse as much as possible because that's where people are doing their work. And that seems to be the center of where people hold their their source of truth. And that's nice. what allows us really to defer really doing a lot of the transformation ourselves or having to have a really, really heavyweight sort of transformation library or heavyweight, um, you know, like DSL that we have to maintain ourselves. We're just relying on that data warehouse. Super cool. So running through some of those tools and breaking them down for our audience a bit, D3 allows you to make really cool visualizations. Um, D3 is kind of a funny one where I, I feel like there's very few people out there who are really adept at creating D3 graphics from scratch. It seems like people are really good <laughs> at cut the, like, there's like pages of really cool D3 visualizations that then show you like the underlying code because there's so right. much functionality that's possible in there. There's yeah. a lot of like, it's very, it's very low level. So D3, yeah. a lot of times it's for library builders, right? And so that's effectively how we're using it. We have our own visualization library that is built on D3, which is this very, very low level sort of visualization library in JavaScript. Cool. Yeah. Well-defined there. And then another cool tool that you mentioned there, um, is Apache arrow. So we had Wes McKinney on the show, uh, in late 2021. Uh, episode number 523. So Wes McKinney is most famous for having created Pandas, which is ubiquitous in data science. Every hands-on data scientist, I mean, probably 90% of hands-on data scientists around the world use the Pandas library for manipulating data. But Wes actually doesn't develop Pandas anymore himself. He is totally focused on Apache Arrow which resolves some of the issues around pandas as data have become larger and larger. So pandas um, natively is ideal for working with data on a single machine, but Apache Arrow offers a similar kind of syntax and functionality as pandas across uh, a very large number of machines so that you can process large amounts of data rapidly. And so, I don't know if I really have a question there. <laughs> yes, <laughs> we use it. And that benefit is useful for us because we want the same data format to be in the client and operable by the client and also on our back end and in the cache. And we want to inspect that data from our back end code and from various parts in our stack. And so it helps us be super efficient because we can do data processing in the front end when it's convenient. Um, and we don't have to like serialize and deserialize all the data and try to think about what the date format is and how we convert it between, you know, different libraries. It's always, we always just keep it in the arrow format. 
Cool. And then another kind of data tool that you were talking about before we started recording that I'd be interested to hear more about, because I personally hadn't heard much about this before at all, which is DuckDB. Yeah. So DuckDB is an in-process columnar database, which uh, allows you, for us, honestly, I think one of the biggest, it seems to be very hypey right now, but for us, it's a huge benefit for tool builders because uh, all before DuckDB, all of our infrastructure and all of our code depended on data warehouses. So I talked about how fancy these data warehouses are and they have all these com- like you know fancy computations that they can do, but they're also external dependencies. And so when we're testing our infrastructure or we want to do something lightweight or we want to create a demo, we, we have these sort of external dependencies. Um, and I'm not sure, actually, I haven't looked into it too deeply, but I'm pretty sure there's no way to like run any sort of emulated Snowflake locally and like test against it. So building a DuckDB adapter, what it allows us to do since it's in process is it allows us to test our code completely in a completely isolated way. And it's also what enables like just very isolated use cases for our customers. So if they just want to upload a parquet file or a CSV or a spreadsheet of some sort, and want to start hacking around with it, and they don't want to think about these data warehouses. They're one, you know, data warehouses are wonderful. They're these really amazing pieces of technology, but they're also very heavyweight. So if you don't want to deal with that, DuckDB is a great sort of stand-in that allows you to have a lot of the power of those data warehouses without having to have that external dependency. Very cool and well articulated for one that I just kind of, uh, <laughs> uh, that I just threw at you. I'm like, DuckDB, what is it? And you're like, ah, it's an in process columnar database. Uh, it's perfect. And yeah, being able to describe Actually, to tie yeah. it together, it operates natively on those uh, Apache Arrow APIs. So it turned out to just be very convenient. We are already serializing data with Apache Arrow. And it turns out that format is really, really fast for the types of computations that DuckDB is doing. 